Mario Gabelli, who's a legendary investor, was recently interviewed by Barron's Magazine about what he thinks about the US economy or the economy as a whole, and what are his biggest picks in the securities markets right now because he's still an active manager and i found a very interesting stock pick that he did discuss which was herc holdings which is a machinery equipment rental company and so i dug deep into it produced a valuation and have a lot of insight into the background of the company and this overall story and so that's what i'm going to cover in this video so guys smash that like button subscribe if you're new and of course drop a meow in that chat you're watching more money let's get it What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Let's dive right into this one because there's a lot to cover. So you can see here that Mario Gabelli is a billionaire. He runs the Gamco, a mutual fund and an investment firm that he founded in 1977. So before a lot of us were even born. And he rose to fame in the 80s when he found success betting on the media and telecom sectors. So in the article, they asked Mario Gabelli, 2022 has been a confusing year. Where do we go from here? And Mario essentially says that the U.S. consumer is in good shape. Sure, the U.S. consumer's net worth is down from the $149 trillion as of March 31st, as financial assets have fallen, but it's still more than twice as high as the $65 trillion in 2012. So effectively, he's saying that a ton of wealth has been created over the past 10 years. And you can't, of course, disagree with that. Now, in terms of an economic slowdown, Mario Gabelli believes that it should be mild. And the reason why he believes that it should be mild is because today we're not talking about investing in the securities markets. Otherwise, we're going to miss on future gains. We're talking about inflation, interest rates, infection, invasion, infrastructure and incomplete energy policy. So effectively, what he's saying is that we're back to business fundamentals. So in this environment, gross margins matter, pre-tax profits matter, taxes matter, inventory buildup matters, pension costs matter, and so on and so forth. But I think it's a very exciting time right now because I really got bored last year because the valuations were so high and I was selling companies that I didn't want to sell into the uh, strength of the market and I really didn't have a lot to do. So I got into like smoking meats and making cupcakes and stuff like baking. So it was a really weird year for me. So I just hope that the market stays back in this normal territory so I can go back to doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which is valuing securities. And so they asked him, will deal making activity pick up? And so what Mario is saying is that a big negative for the stock market right now is higher rates. Higher yields have a negative impact on valuations. So of course, that means in the short term, you should expect that stock prices could continue to come down. And look, at the end of the day, anytime we've had higher rates of inflation and then obviously tightening from the Federal Reserve, we saw at risk assets like securities come down. And a lot of people have seen their portfolios really impacted by that sort of security decline in 2022 thus far. And now they ask him the more important questions. What stocks are you favoring right now? So. Gabelli is saying that, you know, he's very bullish on the American farmers. So he's bullish on CNH industrial. Uh, he likes the aerospace space and he believes that it'll benefit from more spending by the US, NATO, Japan and others. And so there he likes Aerojet Rocketdyne Holdings. That's largely out of my circle of competence. So you probably won't see me cover that one on this channel. And then the one that I do want to talk about, which is in my circle of competence, is that the infrastructure space, I've spent most of my career in the infrastructure space. He believes that there's an influx of spending and potential reshoring ahead. Companies are going to need equipment. And so one of his favorite suppliers of equipment, so industrial equipment, is Herc Holdings or HRI. Now, on a totality, here are his positions that he's recommending right now. So you can see Herc Holdings number three on that list. CNH is there, Aerojet's there, and then there's others there as well. Now, here's one that I do want to point out that a lot of you guys have been mentioning to me, Paramount. So I am going to be doing a model on Paramount and a video on it soon. So if you want access to that model, guys, the Patreons will have access to it as soon as I'm done with it. Now, this is what Herc Holdings does. So obviously you can see that they have aerial industrial equipment. So those are your boom lifts. They have material handling equipments. Those are your sort of like 
cranes and electric forklifts. Funny story, uh, in university, I actually worked for a window company and I drove around one of these sort of like forklift things and I drove it right into the wall and everybody laughed and they made me sign the wall. And I believe that my signature is still somewhere on a wall in an industrial factory in Brampton, Ontario. Now, the next one is earth moving equipment. You guys know what this is. And then they have other sort of equipment. Now, the other is the interesting one because I believe that's kind of where the specialty opportunity is and those are higher yielding opportunities but i'll dive into that a little bit more in a bit actually i stand corrected the specialty uh spaces on its own so you can see here they have climate control and remediation uh industrial sort of chillers and heaters and dehumidification equipment they also have power distribution so electric air compressors portable generators that makes a lot of sense they have pumps and then they have entertainment services and other so i'm assuming that that might be like lifts for um video or movie production i'm not really sure and look there's production lighting there so i might be right there and of course where i live it's really cheap to film movies and such especially sort of like field shots like open greenery type shots so you do see sort of that production equipment there around like where i am often and so it makes sense that they would be renting this from a company like hers and so what exactly is their strategy well you can see here that they're investing in more fleet across their existing locations and so you can see here that the kegger that they expect up until 2024 is a six percent per year increase in original equipment costs so it looks like they are seeing a strong economy and strong demand for their products which is why they're increasing the number of their fleets or increasing their investment in their fleet now that's their overall fleet but notice what they're doing in their specialty area the overall kegger in the original equipment cost is expected to be 21 percent going into 2024 so they're really investing heavily in their space and what they're effectively saying is that the specialty equipment typically averages 14 to 16 percent higher dollar utilization than their core equipment and so there's a big need to invest into this space more and more they have a competitive advantage versus their local suppliers and they have cross-selling opportunities between customers requiring specialty and core equipments and so this is a big opportunity for them right now and now you can see in terms of market share in the various sort of spaces and you can define the spaces as climate pump power and entertainment notice how climate they're targeting to take 15 percent of the market share so double that market share with pump they're looking to double that market share as well so these are the biggest opportunities that they have in this space right now and so they're not only growing by increasing the number of units that they have available for rental but one of the things that they're going to do is also grow through taking market share so the industry is growing but they're also taking market share and this is what i mean about them potentially growing market share as well they're looking to expand the number of locations served by 40 percent through greenfield and m a expansion opportunities by december 2024 so they currently have 295 locations they're looking to add a third to that to get to approximately 400 locations and what exactly is the story like how are they getting there well you can see here that there's market forces that are accelerating growth especially in the specialty area however notice that they're really honing in and they're effectively saying that it's management that's driving this growth by specifically focusing on specialty focusing on increasing the customer share of wallet increasing utilization and expanding into larger urban markets so they're not just sitting tight and letting the market take them they're also attacking the market and so they want their target dollar utilization across their fleet to be around 50 to 60 percent overall and here's where they see their growth opportunities beyond 2023 you can see that the, obviously there was that 550 billion dollar federally funded infrastructure package but you can see that there's lots of infrastructure projects so highways and bridges ev charging stations power grid modernization high speed rail i don't know how much that grows but there's a lot of stuff airports um, on the industrial space, you can see that there's electric vehicle manufacturing, chip manufacturing. They're looking to pass a bill if they already didn't pass it yet. Renewables. And then in the specialty space, obviously power generation. You just need more generation 
uh, as America continues to draw on the grid more, especially as we sort of move more into the EV space. And the other thing is, this is where your valuation may differ from my valuation. It doesn't look like they're looking to pay down all of their debt. It looks like as earnings go down, their debt to EBITDA is expected to organically decline. So pay attention to that because you'll notice that in my valuation, I penalize their valuation for the debt, but I don't think you really have to, but I just do it because I do it to every company as a whole. I'm just that kind of investor, very conservative, but it doesn't make sense in many situations. And this might be one of those situations where it doesn't make sense to do that. Now, the real question is anytime you have this sort of like cash flow generating company, how are they allocating their cash? Are they wasting it? What are they doing? And you can see here that they have a capital allocation plan. So number one, they want to invest for organic growth. Number two, they're looking at strategic M&A. Number three, they're paying out dividends. And number four, they're going to be uh, repurchasing shares. Notice for number three that they're going to initiate a dividend at $2 per share annualized. So that's something to expect into the future. And it also will bring a different sort of shareholder base to the company. And this drives further into how they're investing surplus capital. Now, between 2020 and 2024, effectively what they're saying is that if they generate two to $3 billion of capital, what are they going to do with it? Well, they're going to invest $1.5 billion of it into M&A. And that, of course, will pump up their EBITDA by approximately $270 million plus synergy opportunities. And then of that leftover billion dollars that they have, so they're, they've just given you an example on the right here of what are they going to do with two and a half billions of dollars. $1 billion is going to go into either additional M&A, which could increase EBITDA by another $180 million or completely into share repurchases. So if they assume a share price of $130 per share, they're buying back approximately 26% of the shares outstanding. So they're really owner focused and capital focused. But what I really love is that the first thing they said with their excess capital is that they're going to invest it into the business. The second thing that they're going to do is they're going to try to focus on m and opportunities. So that's what I really want to see. I don't like when companies commit to dividends or buybacks over reinvesting in their business, especially when you're seeing such immense levels of greenfield opportunities. So I really like the direction that management is going here. And in 2022, they're having a great year. They just raised guidance with their Q2 2022 results. They're now guiding to approximately $1.2 billion in adjusted EBITDA. So that's very interesting. Now, despite that, notice that despite the strong performance of the company as a whole, the broader market sell-off has really hit the shares of this company. Their shares are coming closer to around $100 per share. Notice, however, that lately the share price has sort of rebounded. And I think when you see people like Gabelli talking about how this is one of his positions, you could see this share price continue to rebound further but the question is, what is the sh company's valuation? That'll really determine if the share price should rebound. And before I go into my valuation, I want to show you what Wall Street is saying. So Wall Street is valuing this company at $170 per share. And there's only really two ways to do this, in my opinion. The first is to ignore the debt. And the second, of course, is to apply a higher multiple than I'm applying. And I'm going to show you my valuation afterwards. But $173 price target by Wall Street is effectively saying that this company is worth more than 70% more than what its current share price is. So that's a real bull. I like to look at Wall Street from the perspective of if the average analyst share price is more than 50% of the current share price of the company that's a real like buying opportunity it's a real signal that the company is somewhat undervalued now before i go into my valuation guys please consider subscribing to the channel to not miss out on great content. Notice that 80% of the viewers or 80% of the watch time is coming from people who are not subscribed. So please subscribe if you can. Now let's go into my valuation. Now notice in my valuation, I believe that the company is worth approximately $170 per share. Now remember the company is not actually looking to pay down debt. They're paying that cash out. However, if you penalize them for the debt like I have, the valuation comes down to $106 per share. But I'm also using a terminal multiple that might be a little bit too low at 12.5 times earnings. So this is something where my valuation methodology might not make sense with this company. And I might really think about revising it. But this is an opportunity where I do believe that the company's worth approximately $170 per share. And I do believe that they will organically pay down that debt. So maybe I think the better option right now is to term out that debt 
discount it, and then apply that amount to the valuation. Otherwise, you might be making the same mistake I'm making in this case, where you might be understating what the company's worth. Now, I've provided a full model on Herc to the Patreons. Now, how do you get access to that model? Well, you can get access to the model at the lower tier of the Patreon. Now, Herc is not the only company that's doing really well in 2022. I recently put out a video on Microsoft where I argued that the company is doing a lot better than what you may think. And you can actually get access to that video right here.